Good day. I am Julian Denise Gregorio from Nueva Ecija University of Science and Technology College of Nursing. And for today's video, we are going to do Leopold's Maneuver, Measuring Fundic Height, and Auscultation of Fatal Heart Tone. First, for the assessment of Leopold's Maneuver, obtain obstetrical history of the client and expected date of confinement and age of gestation. Also prepare the equipments and supplies, stethoscope, tape measure, and bath towel. Verify the physician's order and explain the procedure to the client. And for the planning, instruct the patient to empty her bladder. Second, position the woman supine with knees slightly flexed. Place a small pillow or roll towel under on one side. For the fundic height measurement and fatal heart tone, the assessment is to determine the need for Leopold's maneuver. Assess the client's overall condition and determine when the client's last voided or was last tested for urine analysis. This is to determine the immunization history and if there is a history of abnormal fetal presentation in the family during pregnancy and the last menstruation period and expected date of confinement. And for the planning, allow the adequate time to prepare for the procedure and this is must be performed during an antenatal checkup. And for the equipment, stethoscope and measuring tape. And let's now proceed for the procedure. Good morning, Mrs. Cruz. I am Julian Denise Gregorio, and I will be your student nurse for today. May I know your full name? Okay, great. So for today, we will be doing the Oakwoods Maneuver. We will be able to identify the positioning and presentation of your baby. After assessing Mrs. Cruz AOG, she is currently on her 28 weeks, which is good to do Leopold's maneuver. At the end of the procedure, the fatal presentation will be the third and the fatal heart bone will be located. Before we proceed, I will explain the procedure for you first and what is contained in each step. For the first maneuver, it will help us to identify if your baby is in which or cephalic presentation, meaning it's either the head that is on the top or the buttocks, or the head is on the bottom or the buttocks. And for the second maneuver, it will help us to identify where your baby's back is and it will help us to identify the small parts or the hands and the legs of your baby. For the third maneuver, it will help us to confirm the first maneuver, meaning if what we found in the fundus is the head, then the presenting part must be the buttocks. Or if we found the buttocks is at the fundus, then the head must be at the bottom. And it will also help us to identify the fetal heart tone once we find the baby's back. And for the last maneuver, we will be able to tell if the baby's head is engaged or not. Okay, Mrs. Cruz, have you gone to the toilet? Okay, great. And also, may I ask to slightly flex your knees? Okay, Mrs. Cruz, now I'm going to do hand hygiene and apply gloves. Okay, Mrs. Cruz, can we go ahead and start the procedure? Okay, great. So now, I'm gonna expose only the area that we're going to check and lift your shirt up. doing the first maneuver. Place your hands on the fingers like a diamond or triangle and I'm going to palpate for the part that is in the fingers. If it is soft, then it is the buttocks and if it's hard, then it is the baby's head. Now, for the second maneuver, we are going to palpate the baby's back and we're going to search for the arms and the legs as well. For 
to turn it maneuver, I'm going to place my hand in the same place as pubis. Is that okay? So we are going to check if the baby's head is engaged or not. So far, the baby's head is still able to move and push upward as I place my finger in the same place as pubis. The baby's head is not yet engaged. Okay, this is good. For the last maneuver, I will put both my hands in the uterus area. Is that okay? Okay, so we will now feel for the cephalic prominence or to see if the baby is extended or is it, it is flexed. I will put both my hands on the uterus area. Is that okay? Okay, good. So now, so now I will be um, going to feel for the cephalic prominence or to see if the baby is extended or if this place. Now what that we are done in the Yoko's maneuver, the next procedure is what you call the fundal height measurement. We will just measure your fundus to actually validate your AOG which is 28 weeks. Now that I removed my gloves, this procedure will help us to identify if your AOG is correlated to the size of your fundus or the length of your baby which is only approximate measuring. Also, you can help just by relaxing so the procedure goes smoothly. The patient is now in the dorsal recumbent position. Mrs. Cruz, could you spread your knees for me? Okay, thank you very much. Now we are going to separate the legs and we were just going to expose the area that we are going to assess which is the fitness. Okay, Mrs. Cruz, now I'm going to warm my hands again and touch your belly. We are going to copy for the fundal press of the top of the fundus. So this is the part because it feels like a hard walk. We are also going to assess the pubic bone. The top of the pubic bone which we will start the measurement at. Okay Mrs. Cruz, I'm going to take tape measure and we are going to choose the centimeter side and measure. So to measure from the top of the pubic bone to the fundal crest. So that is about 28 meters. It means that it is correlated to your AOG. Okay, Mrs. Cruz, for the next procedure, which is the fatal heart tone, I will place the bell side of the stethoscope chest piece on the fetal's convex portion, closest to the anterior uterine wall. Now listen by pressing firmly and very gently. Count a full minute holding the stethoscope chest piece while the other hand feels for the client's radial pulse. Okay, the baby's fetal heart tone is in normal range. Now I can put back your blanket so you can rest. Again, thank you Mrs. Cruz for your cooperation. And for the documentation, document the procedure including the test for form and result in the client's record using the forms or checklist supplemented by the narrative notes when appropriate. Notify the healthcare facility responsible regarding to the result. Inform the client regarding to the findings and perform detailed follow-up based on the findings that deviated from expected or normal for the client. And last, 
teach the client how to do proper follow-up and provide other appropriate instruction. Again, I am Julian Denise Gregorio from Nueva Ecija University of Science and Technology, College of Nursing. Thank you for watching.